like you're watching Overdrive. Now, Formula One is the pinnacle of motorsports. It has the most famous teams, the fastest cars and the best drivers in the world. Now, to be a Formula One driver, you need equal measures of physical fitness, driving skills and luck. But just how fit does a Formula One driver really have to be? We sent Sandeep out to find out. The past month has been an absolute whirlwind for Karun Chandok. Since being confirmed as India's second Formula One driver, he's been crisscrossing the globe attending seat fittings, car launches, PR meets and the first three races of his F1 career. And now after a strong finish in Malaysia, he's finally back at his hometown in Chennai for a well-deserved break. But Formula One drivers don't get a break from training. And today Karun has invited us to one of his training sessions in Chennai. Though what we're going to do on the East Coast Road in the middle of the day is a little beyond me. Hey Sandeep. Hi Karun. How are you doing? Dude, this is the last thing I would expect a Formula 1 driver to show up in a cycle. Yeah, but it's, uh, it's part of our job. We need to do a lot of training and uh, we are in Madras for a few days. There's not many places you can ride with the traffic and everything, but uh, down the coast is nice, uh, a little bit of peace and quiet. So tell me, how much do you ride on a normal day? Uh, I'll ride 65, 70 kilometers, maybe four days a week. So I try and do, try and do 250 kilometers a week. Normally. Ouch. Okay, I, I've got an, a bike with me today, but I really don't think I'm going to be Come able on, to... let's see how much I can kill you. Let's go. We keep going on about how Formula One drivers are amongst the fittest sports persons on earth. Mm. And a lot of people turn around and say, look, they're driving cars for a couple of hours every other weekend. Yeah. But it really is way more than that, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you're starting to huff and puff, I see, but uh, this is like a warm-up. This, this is slower than a warm-up ride at the moment, so it is, uh, it is hard work driving a Formula 1 car. I mean, you know, we had a, a heart rate monitor on me in uh, Malaysia, and your heart rate's at 170 beats minimum, peaks at uh, 187 or something. It's very hard cardiovascularly, but you need also strong muscles. Obviously, with, uh, with the G-forces and the loads on your neck and stuff. And that's so, something we don't really see on TV yet, no. right? The G-forces that you go through when you you're can't, pondering you, at those you, you, can't, you can't simulate that, really. Unless you experience it in a car. I mean, if you, got in my, if you got in one of my cars, I think your neck wouldn't survive more than two laps. It's normal, you know? It's, it's nothing to do with you or personally or anything. I, I suffered. When I started testing with Red Bull, I suffered. In half a day, my neck was finished. So other than cycling, what else do you do? How much time do you spend a day working on your physical fitness? It depends. In the off-season, you're training maybe four or five hours a day. A lot of neck training. Uh, during the season, it's a bit less because, you know, you can't arrive at a race tired. You can't arrive at a race, um, you know, having risked an injury. So you go, you go easy on the bike and things like that. So we're about halfway distance to Mahabalipuram right now. How much do you think you can beat me by? And how fast can you actually go on this bike? Well, we're not even halfway. I think we've only done like... <laughs> we've done maybe 5% of my ride so far. Not even... Uh, so... I don't know. Let's have a go. Maybe half an hour. Alright, let's give it a go. Come on. Ah! Coming! 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Need to get to within 20 minutes of him. I have the tiger, baby. I have the tiger. Oh, oh. Go train with an F1 driver. Really, whose bright idea is this? What does he think I am? Superman? I can't do this anymore. I really can't do this anymore. So, I've nearly reached Mahabalipuram now. No sign of Sandeep, he's miles behind me, I think. Might have a little bit of a drink and a stretch, I think. Hello. Don't even talk about the time. I don't want to talk about the time, okay? If I hadn't managed to catch a ride with this guy, I don't think I would have made it here. Tell me, do you do this every day? Like every day? Uh, not every day, maybe four days a week. But the other three days I'm doing something else. 
Um, normally we get one day off, we take a break on, uh, on Sunday. But uh, yeah, most of the most six days a week is two sessions a day. There's also this saying that uh, we have that F1 drivers work hard, but they party twice as hard. Now come on, surely there must be some downtime that you do get. There is some downtime, but for me, by nature, even before Formula One, even before I started racing, I was not uh, the big party person. I'm not a nightclub person. I'm not a page three person. Um, I lead quite a simple life. Uh, you know, for me, I enjoy riding my bike. I enjoy training. I enjoy hanging out with my friends, watching IPL matches, and and going out for dinner or movies. But I'm not a big party person, so I'm not. You won't really see me at the uh, end of weekend party. That brings me to the other part of being an F1 driver. One is, of course, the partying and all of that. The other is, well, the glamorous women you see on the arm of almost every driver out there. Now, come on, Karun, where's? Why don't we see that yet? Uh, well, I've only had three races. <laughs> you know, when we come for a race weekend, what's, what's become apparent to me, which I didn't realize till, till these three race weekends, and more especially in Australia and in Melbourne, because we had uh, quite an abnormal weekend in Bahrain, is how regimented your day is. You know, we have so much time for breakfast, so much time to travel the circuit, so much time to stretch with the physio, so much time to get a massage, so much time to get changed. You know, your entire day is planned minute to minute. I really don't know how uh, people have time to go out and meet all these uh, fantastic looking women who are there at the circuit. But uh, it's not about just the fact that you're worried that your mother's watching this, so you don't want it to... Oh, no, no, no. My, my mother's uh, more worried that I won't find somebody <laughs> this season than, uh, than the opposite. I think she's uh, quite open-minded. Okay, so we've kind of done with your uh, biking session for today. Anything else planned? Come on, we're just getting started. Let's go for a run now. Constantly. This I can do this. Now looking ahead to the Chinese Grand Prix, you've had two finishes in the past two races, but now you're going to a track that you've never driven before. Yeah. Now we keep hearing about how F1 drivers sharpen their track knowledge on PlayStation. Myth or fact? No, I think it's myth. I mean, today we use simulators, we use um, different software which the engineers supply us, we use onboard videos. But um, I don't think it's a big deal learning a circuit, you know, to be honest. So, Karun, I don't think I can keep up with you for very much longer. And I don't want to keep you from your training. So, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to come out. I know it's your time off in Chennai with your family. And we're going to be hearing a lot more from Karun. He's going to be doing a little video blog of his experiences from his Formula One season for the Overdrive show. And we look forward to that. But till then, Karun, thank you so much. And the very best of luck for the Chinese Thanks. Grand Prix. Thank you very much.